Standing on deck, you looked ahead to the island of Okinawa. Surrounded by warships, cruisers, and aircraft carriers, you stood aboard the greatest naval fleet on Earth. Suddenly, the entire deck sprung to action. Miles above you, a dark line appeared in the distant sky. The dark line soon became a dark swarm. The swarm became a formation. Hundreds upon hundreds of kamikaze planes, ready to end their lives to take yours. The Kamikaze Special Attack Force left one of the most shocking imageries of World War II. Their attacks contributed to the Pacific's horrific human cost. Welcome to History on Fleek. Today we look at the jaw-dropping realities of Kamikaze in World War II. It's hard to imagine a greater terror than facing down an incoming kamikaze attack. Should one survive the impact and explosion of a crashing Japanese plane, one would likely be left adrift in the sea. Following a ship being critically damaged or sunk from an attack, survivors were often in the water clinging to debris or life rafts. At worst, they were left simply swimming in the open ocean. And once in the water, the danger was not over. As if surviving a kamikaze attack was not enough of an ordeal, there were significant challenges once adrift in the water. Survivors adrift faced the dangers of being exposed to the elements, dehydration, shark attacks, and any injuries that may have occurred from the initial kamikaze. To deepen this peril further, rescue efforts were not clean and simple. Many faced sabotage from ongoing Japanese attacks and even enemy submarines. The US Navy allies would do their utmost to rescue those in the water. Planes were deployed to conduct aerial searches for survivors of kamikaze, and these would be accompanied by ships on the water. Again, this new, brutal tactic required a new, dynamic response. The US Navy deployed the use of helicopters to retrieve those adrift and injured in the water, though this was all a highly risky endeavor. Despite these continual efforts, many sailors who were victims of the kamikaze attacks perished at sea. The kamikaze attack, known as the Divine Wind in Japanese, was an entire brutal war tactic that inflicted numerous casualties on the US Navy fleet and personnel. It's understood some 3,800 kamikaze pilots died during the conflict, and as a result of their actions, some 7,000 US Navy personnel were killed by the attacks. Kamikaze attacks were the deliberate crashing of Japanese planes into Allied targets, a nihilistic and unsettling form of suicide attack. Deeply embedded in the Japanese military code of Bushido, the kamikaze was the most extreme expression of loyalty and death before defeat. Throughout the Pacific Theater's ongoing conflicts, kamikaze pilots significantly impacted the United States Navy. Typically, the planes carrying out the attacks were loaded with bombs or explosives, making them exceptionally deadly. The kamikaze attacks started on October 25, 1944, with thousands of such attacks launched by Japan in the following months. U.S. naval vessels, including destroyers, battleships, and aircraft carriers were targets, with dozens heavily damaged or outright sunk. Yet the casualties were not only felt by the fleet. U.S. sailors faced a high casualty rate from the nihilistic suicide attacks. Many instances were witnessed of sailors who survived such attacks being attacked by sharks, once thrown overboard and adrift in the water. From October 23rd to 26th, 1944, the largest naval battle of World War II unfolded. U.S. forces began an amphibious invasion of the Philippine island Leyte, codenamed King II, the conflict pitted U.S. forces and Filipino guerrillas against the Imperial Japanese Army. It was also the introduction to the war of the first Japanese kamikaze attacks. The first kamikaze attack is believed to have been the crashing of a dive bomber into the HMAS Australia cruiser. Some 64 personnel were injured in the attack, and 30 would be killed. The first Allied ship would be lost to the kamikaze with the sinking of the USS Sonoma on October 24th. Officially, the Kamikaze Special Attack Force conducted its first operations a day later on the 25th. By the end of the battle's final day, the cost of the Kamikaze Special Attack Force was evident. Seven carriers were struck, and some 40 other ships were also hit. On a day when 55 Kamikazes were deployed, three of the largest U.S. escort carriers were badly damaged. The USS Sangamon, Santee, and Suwani.
The kamikaze threat was as unique as it was devastating. It required the U.S. Navy to concoct original strategies and tactics to find a defense against the attacks. Among its new tactics was the birth of new technologies. The U.S. Navy deployed radar and proximity fuses as means to detect and destroy the oncoming kamikaze planes. Yet it wasn't only technological breakthroughs. New tactics included surrounding larger vessels with smaller ships to form a protective barrier around them. In the face of a novel form of attack, the United States Navy would ultimately prevail in the Pacific theater. Despite the significant losses the kamikaze attacks produced, the U.S. was able to adapt to the changing and deadly tactics of the Japanese military. From the 1st of April till June 22nd, 1945, a battle known as the Typhoon of Steel would take place. It was the last major battle of the Pacific War. Both Allied and Japanese forces more or less went for broke. The nicknames of the conflict come from it being the bloodiest of the Pacific, with some 50,000 Allied casualties and approximately double the number of Japanese casualties. Its legend grew from the incredible number of Allied ships and vehicles descending upon the island, the intensity of the combat, and the sheer volume of kamikaze attacks. From many perspectives, the Battle of Okinawa produced the largest and most devastating kamikaze attacks of the entire conflict. The extent of the naval fleet surrounding Okinawa goaded a ferocious air response from the Imperial Japanese forces. Days after the landings on the 1st of April, the air opposition began. On April 6, 1945, 400 Japanese attack planes flew from Kyushu. By the end of the month, some 20 American vessels were sunk and over 150 were damaged. By the end of the month, Japan had lost a staggering 1,100 planes to the Allied naval forces. Approximately 1,465 kamikaze planes attacked the Allied fleet from April 6 till the conflict ended on June 22nd. U.S. intelligence estimated that Formosa housed around 90 planes, when the actual number was closer to 700. The multiple ships lost from this volume of suicide attacks were radar pickets, destroyer escorts, and landing ships. Incredibly, no major Allied warships were lost under this bombardment of kamikaze. That being said, many fleet carriers incurred damage from the never-ending rain of diving planes. Concerning the material, the costs of Okinawa were enormous. The Allied forces lost 13 destroyers, 15 amphibious ships, and a whopping 386 ships were damaged. The Imperial Japanese forces lost 1,430 aircraft in the ceaseless bombardment. At Okinawa, Kamikaze inflicted the largest loss of life ever suffered by the U.S. Navy in a single conflict, taking the lives of nearly 5,000 men. The extent and effect of the Kamikaze Special Attack Force have been a point of debate ever since. Their potential for damage and the loss of life they incurred has never been doubted and was evident across the Pacific. Yet the issue isn't that simple. Only approximately 19% of kamikaze attacks were actually successful. Ultimately, Allied forces did not incur more significant losses than expected despite the greater naval fleet and ever-growing use of kamikaze attacks in the Pacific. 1945 would mark the year that over 2,500 kamikaze pilots were sacrificed, yet did not manage to sink a single fleet carrier, cruiser, or battleship. Perhaps more ironically, the capacity of the U.S. Navy left the kamikaze attacks a near-pointless endeavor. Come 1945, the U.S. Navy was so enormous, any damaged ships could just be routed back home for repair, without the fleet's operations being negatively affected. The Imperial Japanese Army saw the damage and sinking of Allied ships as a fair reason for suicide. It stood to have more accuracy than conventional attacks, and a damaged aircraft attempting a kamikaze attack could still achieve its target. Yet, how did the Japanese soldiers flying to their death feel about it? What has been revealed and learned of the training kamikaze pilots faced is extraordinary. What should have been 30 days often ran beyond two months. Day in and day out, they were pushed to their physical limits and continually beaten. This was meant to instill a fighting spirit, but would continually crush the spirit of the pilots-to-be, who were typically only 19 years old. While they were told not to waste their life lightly, a kamikaze pilot who returned to base too many times would be shot for it. 
private letters of these pilots express exactly what you'd expect from young men in this horrendous situation. Plenty of patriotism and pride, followed by plenty of wishing loved ones well and weighing up the fear of death. One is only left with the question, at the cost of thousands of terrified 19-year-olds with a 19% accuracy against an unsinkable navy, was it worth it? This is History on Fleek and we'll see you next time.